Uh, he's incredibly positive, but uh, I think part of it is intensity. And I think that sort of, he's always been an intense person from the time he was little. He learned to walk early. He just, I gotta go, I gotta do, I gotta, you know, tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. His goal has always been soccer. It's always been to be the best goalkeeper, to be the best he can be. He trains harder than anybody I've ever met. And I think we both are just hungry to get better. So working with him, he pushes me and I try and push him right back. And we're just trying to improve every day to get better. And sometimes I forget what he's going through because of you know how hungry he still is and how passionate he still is about the game. He's just been an inspiration to me. Uh, he's kind of put confidence in myself when I didn't have confidence that he was like the more motivating and more inspiring than, than anyone. So it was, it's like played a huge effect on me because now I like thrive coming into work and thrive working with guys like this, especially him because it, it puts a lot of things into perspective. Well, first of all, to be gifted with you know, a, a level of talent to be able to do things, but also just the drive and determination to put in the hours and not give up and get out there in the rain and the snow and train and all that stuff. So you could see early on that he had that desire. I've had, you know, my experience with Tim Howard and some other uh, youth goalkeepers, Zach McMath, uh, who I had at a young age with the national team that uh, we moved forward. But you know, Mason was the only guy at the time that uh, I was comfortable enough saying that he needs to go to a professional team's academy and see what happens from there. Uh, you know, and then one thing I always caution young goalkeepers about is you can get to the environment and it's up to you to make the most of it. And I was pretty confident that Mason would, would do that. His time with Orlando City uh, moved him along uh, very rapidly. Uh, it put him in an environment where he had to grow up fast, where he had to learn what it was like to be um, at a high level academy first, and then when he was fortunate enough to get the homegrown contract, what it was like to be a young professional. Uh, so in that, you know, in incremental phases with him, uh, I saw the maturation of a, of a boy turning into a young man and a young man into a man. Uh, and you know that he's very much a, a, a man now who understands uh, exactly what he has to do to, for his profession and for his, his career. So uh, his growth just exploded when he got to Orlando City. We just came to the decision that he's just so excited about it and so passionate that let him follow his dream where it takes him now and you know things will fall into place. I remember I was in my apartment sitting down. I had been awaiting his phone call and I just sat on my bed and when he told me, I mean obviously I was hoping for good news, but when he told me we both just cried for a little bit. We were upset. You just, you kind of just, why? It's pretty much the first thing you think like, well, why him? And you know, you're kind of in shock. And you know, he had a couple of uh, little injuries, the quad and, and things like that, which myself and the medical team and Dave were, were trying to figure out, you know, how to go about that and re-strengthen those areas. And then, um, then the other issue popped up when he had that, uh, you know, injury towards his calf and we're trying to figure out what it was and then it turns out it was cancer. So uh, it, it was my initial, uh, you know, response to kind of pull everything back and just step back and say, let, let him kind of deal with it and let it sink in. And I, I personally didn't really know how to handle it. I just thought, let's, let's give him some space and, and figure it out. And The hardest part was realizing or being, being told that I wouldn't be able to play soccer for six to seven months. Um, usually this, this cancer is found in, in a, a bone that's weight bearing or or in your chest or you know somewhere so like if it was in my femur I wouldn't have been able to do any physical activity they have kids that get get it in their femur on crutches so for it to be in a non weight bearing bone and my doctors to let me push the envelope a little bit I was able to to play through the chemo um, but when the doctor first told me that I wouldn't be able to play for six or seven months that's what really uh, to be honest I didn't think about the cancer 
I thought about not being able to play for six or seven months. He almost was like, like, it's cool, Mom, everything's fine. But then I was like, you can't really be thinking everything's fine because you just got told you have cancer. So it's kind of the way Mason tends to process things. I, I personally didn't really know how to handle it. I just thought, let's, let's give him some space and, and figure it out. And I think, you know, a week or two, once he settled it in and, and spoke with his doctors and stuff, he shot me a text and, and said, uh, when are we training? And I'd read that and thought, what, what are you talking about? And I, like, I think we'll take some time off. He said, no, like, I'm good, to, I'm training. So he came in and, and, and we worked and I didn't bring anything up and he didn't even talk about it. It was just, it was just a little hurdle for him. It was just uh, something that got in the way of him training. I think we'll sometimes be off, you know, working together and, and I might hit some service on him and he'll take a set of six, maybe eight, and he'll be done and he'll be, you know, ex have exerted himself and then I'll look at him and I'll be like, okay, that guy's got half the blood that I have in my body right now. And he just crushed a set, made six saves in a row cleanly, and then I have to go in and basically match that. Because if I'm not doing it, then that's just me being lazy. Because I know that I physically can do what he just did. I just need to be as mentally tuned in as he always is. So he motivates me in that way because he sets the standards so high, regardless of what he's going through. And it's, it's his mindset to, to not bring it up and not talk about it because I think to him it's not a health issue, it's just it's a hurdle getting in the way of him reaching his goals of being the best keeper in MLS. And it's not, it, it's not a concern that, that he's been diagnosed with cancer, it's a concern that he's missing training. That's how he views it and that's how he's approached it, which is unreal. We had a meeting at the beginning of the year and one of the coaches asked, who here finds Mason as an inspiration? And I was thinking, okay, no one's, not many people are gonna raise their hand, maybe. I didn't really think about myself as an inspiration, and then, you know, more than half the team's hands shot up, and uh, that surprised me. Like, I never feel like an inspiration or think about myself as an inspiration. I'm just going out every day so I can be the best goalkeeper I can be, and performing to the best of my abilities, regardless of of who else is in front of behind me or, or whatever. So I think the guys see that and get inspired by it, but I'm not trying to be an inspiration. I'm just trying to do what I love um, and make myself as best as possible and perform my best. He's the most mentally resilient character, let alone athlete, I've ever come across. Um, I've never seen someone incredibly determined to, to reach their goals of what, whatever he sets up. Um, and he set them incredibly high, and I think you'll, I think you'll get that. I've never seen anyone approach training and, and his whole life around this. Like I can't wait to get back on the pitch. I can't wait to get back on the pitch. Like that's a thing that's said every day, and I, and I think that's what helps him stay motivated to, to continue to fight. That, that's the confidence that he kind of put in myself, and and it has helped me uh, tremendously. And I know that whenever he's back and. He's going to continue to have that will and, and the d determination and the work rate and all that stuff. And, and I know that the ceiling's very high for him. Like, there's, if cancer can't stop him, there's not going to be anybody that's going to tell him that he can't do something. There were a few times where he didn't want to be at the hospital or he would be complaining while he was at the hospital saying, you know, why am I here? I should be training. I should be on the field with the guys. And although I understood his, his frustration, I knew that his life was more important. The one week stays that I had at the hospitals, uh, in, the middle of those, in the middle of those or in, and towards the end of those were my darkest moments because it felt like I was in prison, you know, trapped in a hospital room for seven days at a time is, is not easy for anybody. And I felt that that was my, not weakest moment, but moment where I was most negative, for sure. I think he will let down his guard, so to speak, um, and show it with me. But I don't think he likes to because he really does seriously believe in maintaining a positive outlook. And But you can't always be positive. Sometimes you don't feel positive. So I think 
he's learned through this process too that you know it's okay to you're down sometimes um, and you bounce back. Those those weeks days were over I felt like I got let out of prison and I just had so much freedom I could do anything I wanted basically well not anything I wanted but and I was able to go back to playing you know as much as I could and training as much as I could and I was around the guys and and with my friends and stuff so that I didn't think about those dark times or the tough times in the hospital when I was outside the hospital. See this? Cerny Balk, Black Spider, famous Russian goalkeeper. Usually, I've also in my union station, they don't finish till eight months. I've had patients who've had to do it for a year because of the <laughs> so many delays in between. Mm -hmm. If you've just been on time, then um, it would be you are completely cleared to move on with normal life. You always rush me. I like to take my times with things. How's that, Rego? I got it. Okay. Uh, look, mate, on behalf of all the guys, I just want to say congratulations. You've uh, faced an incredibly difficult situation, um, and uh, none of us can really imagine or, or know what, what that was like, uh, but you, you faced it with dignity and grace. You never once complained or felt sorry for yourself. Um, I have to say you've been a massive inspiration and a great example to all of us. And for that, we thank you, and we couldn't be happier to have you back. So welcome back, brother. Thank you. Do you know about this? <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Let's eat. <laughs> we just joke, you know, you've had all your bad setbacks now, you know, and we talk about what he wants to see for the future. He just wants to get a chance and put this, some of this stuff behind him and, you know, move forward. The way Mason sees life after cancer is exactly the same way he saw it before. Like, his goal has always been soccer. It's always been to be the best goalkeeper, to be the best he can be. And that was his goal before, and that's his goal that was his goal during chemo, and that's his goal now. Like, it hasn't changed. Like I said, it was just an obstacle keeping him from getting to that place, and he just had to overcome it. He sets goals very high. He, he, he wants to be the best in, in the league, um, and, he, and he, he absolutely punches for the start. Um, and that, that's all he talks about. Um, I don't even think he talks about life after soccer, football, you know. He, this is his life and this is what he does and I, I truly believe that he'll accomplish that because he he's a hundred percent dialed into those to those goals and, and achieving the utmost greatest success that he can. And him going through this treatment and stuff, I've definitely seen that strength um, of character come out and, and that kind of will and determination to to get through this. I'd say I, I'm mentally tougher for sure because of this and I gained a new uh, appreciation and gratefulness for soccer and life in general and uh, my family and my girlfriend you know uh, I appreciate them and, and I'm grateful for them for them so much more and and a new motivation I would say uh, I, I've, I didn't think about this before but now that I've, I've finished and completed all my treatments and stuff I want I, f I want to show kids that will go through this in the future that it's just a blip in your life. It's just a small, small portion of it. And after that, you can go on and do whatever you want. So I want to become a, 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 a world-class goalkeeper. And I will become a world-class goalkeeper to show 
show kids that this is just a blip in their life and, and it won't stop them from doing what they want and, and achieving whatever they want.